you're running a business. Like for real, take it seriously. And you're learning a lot. And there are people out there who are just starting their businesses, whether it's, it's a lawn service or another cleaning service, whatever it is, you are learning enough information that you can turn around and share with them. Imagine you're going down the road, okay? I don't know what the main highways are here in, in Chicago, but imagine that you're going down the road and you realize that there's gonna be traffic. And I'm behind you a couple of miles. If you know that I'm coming to the same event that you're coming to, you're probably gonna say, hey Garrett, hey, there's traffic. Get off, next exit, take the detour, you'll get it on time. Even if you were just a mile or two down the road, if you are a mile or two ahead of someone else who's starting their company, starting their cleaning company or whatever, it is your obligation, your opportunity to turn and share. Share with them that real news like, hey, there's traffic up ahead, watch out. That's one of the reasons why I love being here because I'm hearing all of these really cool stories and I'm learning from you guys and it's like, yeah. And it doesn't matter what stage of the game you're in. If, even if you're under a million, you're above a million, we're dealing with the same issues and we can learn from each other. Every single time, we got one guy who was sitting here, don't, ah, there you are, right? Just got out of high school, not high school, you literally came out of high school, right? But, you know, just got out of college and started his own cleaning company. He may not have the type of experience that many of you have in here. Share, let him know what he's gonna be bumping into in a little bit so that by the time he gets there, it's like, I know exactly what to do. I can move right in. We have an opportunity to be great. I don't know what the big, big mission is for you guys and what you, where you're going, right? But I see the steps, and I'm like, I wanna be a part of that. Like, that's cool, that's sexy, that's attractive. People shouldn't feel a sense of pride being in the industry that we're in, because you're realizing how important you are. Is this making sense? Yes. So before I continue, any thoughts so far? What comes to mind? Go for, go for it. I think uh, the cleaning industry in itself is, is a very cutthroat kind of business. Mm -hmm. Not everybody likes to share, mm -hmm. you know, in the area at least where I'm at. Nobody likes to divulge their information on how they price or yeah. anything. Yeah. I, on the other hand, I like to share. I always get involved with other cleaners because I have so much work that I hand it off to them. Hey, you know what? I've, I've read your reviews. Can you handle this client? And we partnered up with maybe two cleaners in our area. Yeah. And and it's it's crazy that they ask you, why are you doing this? And it's like I always tell them, there's enough work for everyone. There is. And we shouldn't be fighting and we should be doing it together. Because I know that when, when I'm kind of like a little bit low or something, they'll be like, hey, you know what? I got three clients, they need service. I got this building that I can, you know, clean, and you go give them a quote. Yeah. I got you. Yeah. So we partner up that way. But honestly, a lot of cleaners that are, I don't want to say it this way, but low mentality of just money, 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 and I just want to keep this, yes. they can have that. Mm -hmm. That's what I do. Mm -hmm. One minute. What, I'm curious, what inspired you and your work ethic and also getting into the cleaning industry? Okay, okay, so I'm a teacher intrinsically at heart, right? My mother is a teacher, my brother is, my grandmother. <coughs> teacher runs in my family, teacher in, in entrepreneurship or businessman. I oftentimes wanted to teach, but I didn't want to teach in a traditional school setting because I can only teach a curriculum. I'm not interested in that, but I know that especially black males, are needed in the, in the school system. So I thought to myself, how can I still create an environment where I can teach, where I can learn, where I can grow? And the first thing I thought was, the next part of the value. So again, I have educators and I have business people. So I said, well, let me start a business. Now, I was afraid initially of having employees. I was scared because I didn't know what it took. I didn't know how to prepare for it. But I got myself a coach. And you guys remember Mike talking about having a coach. How many of you do have a coach? Okay, good. Let's try to get that number up. In getting the coach, my coach, the first question he asked me was, Darren, 
How much money do you want to make? It's like, I never thought about money. I said, I just want to be a better person. He says, Gary, you won the lottery. Like, what do you mean? In talking to this man who was much older, in his 70s, he was at the point in his life where he wanted to share. White man from Salt Lake City, Utah, shared with the black man from the United States Virgin Islands. And he always made the joke, who would have thought I would have been friends with a black man from the Virgin Islands? I was like, who would have thought? But the fact is I became an avid learner. I showed up and I did the job. I did the work that he asked me to do. All the homework, so much so that sometimes it made me physically throw up because he was pushing me, he was pushing me, pushing me, study this, study this, study this. He had me reading over like a book a day. Read, 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 audio books, read books, all, kind, all kinds of stuff. He's preparing me to be a better man. And in turn, I can turn around and share what I've learned to my team members. Because when I go in and I clean, clean for our clients, I have the apron on the whole line. If I'm interacting with my clients and they're loving the interaction with me, when I step out of the way and my team members come in with the same apron, they automatically get the respect that the client gave me. So I was queuing things up for my team members to stand tall. All I ask for them is to just continue to educate themselves. Read, study, pay attention, show up on time, make sure your clothes are tucked in. Don't give anyone any reason to discount you. Just show up, I've already queued it up. And now some of my team members come to work with smiles on their face and they're enjoying it because people are not calling them the cleaning, the cleaning crew. They're like, that's Paul, that's Sam, that's Mike. Call them by name. That makes them feel good. And for me, being a teacher intrinsically, that's the best thing in the world, man, to queue up your students so that they can go off and do like some awesome things. So I, I, I have joy in what I do. I have joy in the challenges. They work me, they work me as they do you, but I'm, I'm clear as to why I started a company. I'm very clear. You have a question about me. I got you. I think it's a, uh very good that you mentioned the mental health yeah. aspect of it. Mm -hmm. Personally, I had my mental health issue last year during COVID. Yeah. And the question that you asked, um, who's looking out for us? I went through that whole process where I said, you know, I'm, I'm strong for everybody. I'm here, 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 here home. Or, you know, who's there looking out for me? Right. So that question that you asked, how are you doing? I learned to answer that honestly. I'm not well. Mm. You know, and, and that's a, and, and that's a true. That's a truth as leaders that we have to be able to say because it takes a lot in you to take the makeup off right. and say I'm not well. Because we all put a mask on, no matter how, you know, no, no matter how you disguise it. We put a mask on because we understand internally that business still has to run regardless of how we feel. Yeah. But when you can take that mask off and say to somebody that you don't know, I'm not well. Because that's a question that we ask. How are you doing? I'm not well. And then it leads to a conversation where you can get some weight off your shoulder. Right. My therapist peeled back some layers too. And I understood that from those sessions, the very first session where I crawled, I cried like a baby. Yeah. That I'm still dealing with childhood trauma yeah. that we don't really we don't we don't really realize that it does weigh on our decisions. It plays on how we, we affect our children, our, our, our spouses, how we interact with our employees, our partners, everyone, because it, it starts somewhere. And we have to just get really, really, really raw and say, this is what it is. And it's a step-by-step -step process. And I'm only a, a year into this mental health journey, but I love it. Because it, I, I, I walk around more free. It, 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 it's almost like a liberation. It's like somebody that, that, that has an addiction and they're, they're trying to hide it. And I, I was addicted to hiding my, my pain. Yes. And we all are. But we just have to say that I'm not with it. Yes, and and a, allow that therapy. It, it, and I encourage anybody to find a good therapist. Mm -hmm. Find a good therapist that will just schedule you at, at a whim's notice. 
and say, hey, th th that couch is it, it, available. And, yeah. and, and just let it all out because that's, that's some of the stuff that you can't get out to your spouse a lot of the times. You know, because they, they don't really understand. I know for me personally, I make stuff look good. I make it look easy because I'm, you're just doing, you're just doing, you're just doing it. You guys resonate with that? What do you say? Yeah. We know where we have to be, we have to do this, we have to do that, we have to do that. So just be honest with yourself. I encourage everybody, be honest with yourself and just say, hey, I'm not welcome. I'm not doing well. I'm That's right. Welcome. Awesome. Good job with it. I got you. Next. So, <laughs> she, she's fighting. Don't say it. <laughs> say it. <laughs> Remember, this is an honest moment, okay? This, this, blame Ricky and his team, okay? I, I'm just facilitating. She, yeah, she's looking out for you. Oh, oh, okay. All right, so no, I didn't say it. So the gentleman, he's asking, what happened to the gentleman I was going to fire? So he's still with us, okay? Now he he's been a part of a team. Yeah, he has he has done some really odd things in the past. Um, really stretched his his limits with us. Like he should have been gone a long time ago. But I'm, I'm, again, I love people, so I've been a nurturing coach and mentor, even to a fault sometimes. But had I fired him, the next thing could have been, like, you know, in the news. So what I've learned to do is, even when people have done me wrong, done our business wrong, I have been forgiven. So I grant forgiveness to my team members. And what I do is I set up boundaries, and I say, guys, listen, Here's what I need you to do. Here's what I'm going to need you to do with it. I will consistently ensure that you're paid. I'll be, I'll be there to listen. You can talk to me. Just follow through on your task. And if they don't follow through on the task, I'm asking them the question, so what do you think needs to happen next? And then they go, well, you need another chance? And if I'm giving you umpteen chances, what do you think needs to happen next? Well, maybe it's not a good fit. You can't, that's a brilliant idea. Thank you. Okay, so you know, you said that if you don't follow through, you're not a good fit and you should be terminated. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so I don't have to fire them. They don't eventually fire themselves. But I've, I've given them a chance to just kind of like keep pushing through. You got one. Yeah, um, I just wanted to say to your point, one thing that's helped me because I'm kind of new, like, you know, on my journey, I would say like about a good year in of saying, I'm changing things around. And I soak up a lot of different material, and one of them is big, I'm big on mindset and um, mental health, is if people say, you know, go to a therapist, but I would say if you look at it, you kind of know what they're gonna help you with if you just understand therapy on the basic level. So what tells me is you gotta sit with your thoughts. And they say that that's truly like, that's how you heal, because when you sit with your thoughts, you're gonna, those demons are come, like come and knock at your door. They're gonna say like, "I'm here, hello." And what we normally do is we say, "Nope, I'm not, gonna do I'm not talking to you today." Yeah, yeah. But when you talk to that demon, you see like what's truly wrong. All the therapist's gonna do is bring that demon back up, and you tell them. But if you do it yourself, you're gonna have the confidence to solve more of those problems. I would say the biggest reason I'm still here is because I was sitting on my balcony and figure out what's going on, and. A lot of these problems I have, I see them myself and I ask friends, ask mentors, and then I can keep going because I sat with it for a second. So if you do have those like issues that you have, you want to go to a, go to a therapist, that's a perfect thing that you should do. But just sit and think about it for a second and get through it. You may cry, you may laugh, but whatever you're going to do, you're going to get in it because you don't want to stop in hell. Like, you want to get through hell, you got to keep going to get there. So. I would say just take that and give it a hug. Yeah. Hey. Thank you. Thank you. I'm a fellow pop bomber. But I have to say this, guys, this is so huge. And you know, we have all about the psychological. As babies, right, when we're kids, right, we all trust, right? Mommy, we trust. I, like, I have a daughter, she's 11. Oh, I got my friend. My friend, they're in the park. My friend, they trust everybody, right? But in this world, we have two types of people the ones that trust people right away, right? And then the ones that have, you have to build that trust with them. Right? 
Mike Tyson said it best. I saw it on, 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 on one of his, uh, he was on a podcast. He said, when that person treats you bad, okay, and now you're calloused, the devil wins. And what that means is that you allow them to change you as a person. They win. So now you're this callous person. You're, gym, you're going through all these obstacles. You allow them to win. Don't ever allow them to win. Then be yourself. Me, I trust everybody. Probably everybody knows it already. I don't care. I'm not going to change who I am. I'm going to trust everybody. So you give me a reason not to. Right? But I'm not that person you have to build the trust up. But that's just me. Yeah. That's why I don't let the devil win. We still found a way to talk. <laughs> Don't let the devil in. Don't let the devil in. We're all good. Um, how do you encourage your team? I mean, my crew is all women, actually. But you know, they feel sometimes like oh, we just we. It's not a science to clean. No, we just been doing it. So how you can encourage them and point them, you know, to be, don't feel like that. Yeah. Okay. You know, I hear the question, she asked, how can you encourage your team not to feel as though they're just cleaning toilets? Yes. So I, when I walk into a space, and listen, when I'm out in the field cleaning, I'm okay. Like, like I love that. Once I have something that I can listen to, I'll listen to a book in my ear or something. Okay, so I use those opportunities to really study. When I clean the space, I like to step back and look at it and say, like, wow, I did that. Right? There's a sense of pride that comes with that. And that's probably one of the reasons why I don't go looking for like warehouse cleaning jobs or anything like that. I look for class A, class B buildings, so my team can feel a sense of pride when they're on the way. Who are you doing it for? Is the question that I ask myself and I ask my team. Who are you doing it for? We're not in this life for ourselves. We're here to lead our fellow man to shore. Yeah. And if we're doing that, and I'm cleaning the space, I'm thinking about you being in the space. I'm thinking about you walking in that door in the following morning and sitting down and saying, this feels good, this looks good. Think about what, the team, what you guys did in this entire space for us. So when we came through those doors, it was like, yo, this place is cool. Yeah. The same thing, the same approach we take to our clients. So we tell our team, I, I tell them, listen man, don't look at it as just cleaning a toilet. As you're walking through this space, what are you learning about this space? How a business works? How, how people use their space? How the building breathes? Like what can you learn? Because if you weren't working here, you wouldn't have the opportunity to be in this space. I have some clients where my team members get to talk with them, hang out with them as they're cleaning and so forth. They are hundreds of and thousands of people who are trying to apply to get into that building. They're applying to work there, okay? We are in there. And I'm telling them, yo, you got into the back door. You're in the space. You're talking with the CEO. You're talking with the CEO. You're talking with the directors. The same people that all those people who are sending those resumes want to get to talk to. And you get to talk to them casually. Our clients have hired some of our employees because they saw how they showed up, how they dressed professionally, how they got things done. They were like, Aaron, can we hire this guy? I'm like, yeah. I mean, you want to interview him? They're like, yeah. So I go to my guy and I'm like, yeah, well, you want me to show you how to prepare for that interview? He's like, yeah. And all of a sudden, dude is working for them. He's been working for them for three plus years. And for me, I look at that as a success story. He got it through the back door. He didn't even have to send in a resume because he was showing up and doing his job well. So talk to your team members about, hey, show up, help out, do your job well. You'll be just fine. Just fine. That's how I go about it. Sure, please. Guys, we all know after COVID, the world is, uh, discovered that we are essential, but we knew this before, right? We are important in this industry, in the world, because when everybody went home, went to work from home, we're still working. At least Rosalado, never closed, thank God. And we are essential, we are the first line of defense, so they need to be very proud of, of, of what they're doing, because if they are doing the job right, they are preventing diseases, because we are disinfecting, so our job is very, very important. The world just discovered it, but we knew it. 
done before, and we need to be very proud of what we do. So, thank you. Yes. If I can add to that as well, uh, one of the things, and this goes along with uh, your retention too, and you know, we're constantly trying to, um, you know, we hire people, I don't want to be an HR person. That's a really important question that you brought up uh, that every single one of us has to, um, you know, take in. We really uh, created a, an environment with our people um, to make sure that they understand the value of the work. That it's not, you know, I just clean the toilet, you know what I mean? If you set that tone in your environment, in your work, uh, in your company culture, that they're down here, then that's the way they're going to feel. So it's up to you to make sure they feel like this. And we, so we did a lot of new construction, and I would teach my teams, you know, you know, we come in and I'll tell you, some of these construction people really mess things up. But I say, look at the quality of what these people do. I can't do a minor cut, but they can't clean. I can't, you know, sweat pipes or run electrical wires, but they can't clean. So if you set that to, you're a professional, you are the best at what you do, and they are the best at what they do, and we come in, we're the finishing touch, we're the ones that make their crap look great. Okay? You set that tone, and you're gonna, you're gonna continue to lift them up, okay? You're gonna find that you're not in the turnover either. So you make them feel good, and you're gonna have them forever. Thank you. I'll show you this, this one thing that my, my, my coach, and, and he died a couple years ago, right? So I had him for four years. We developed this thing where my team, we were image consultants, okay? So clean slate janitorial, creating clean, fresh, and inviting environments. An image consultant will meet with you shortly. So when our team shows up, our clients are looking at them as being image consultants. So they would say, well, tell me what am I supposed to do here? And the goal was for our for us to build up our team so well that they could say, well, what I see is X, Y, Z, and this is what I would recommend. Kind of like what you were saying earlier, right? What you recommend to your clients and so forth. And by doing that, all of a sudden, our team members are leading our clients around and they're like looking along with them and, and they're like, okay, okay, so I guess that's what we do. It's building them up. So no longer are you just cleaning toilets, you're recommending things and you're an image consultant. Now some of our prospective clients saw it and they thought like, it was kind of janky and saying like, oh, that's just one of those little fluff things. But if you come in with that pride and joy and you come in with that understanding of how a space should be cleaned and you can speak intelligently to your clients, come on, man. They have to respect you because they actually call for your help. They didn't say, come do this. They're asking for help. So when we show up, we are their help. We're the consultants. So I like it. Feel it deep down in your bones. Any other thoughts? Go ahead. I just want to say also that for us as a company, we make sure that the client and the executive team also have that same respect for our cleaners. Yes. Because if the executive team just sees them as cleaners, they're going to make decisions that are based on them just being other cleaners. Yes. But if they see them as heroes, as that person who's like Batman, we don't see them. They actually come in to clean your home, clean your, your office. When you come to clean in the morning, you don't see that coffee stain. You don't, you know, smell that. And making sure that they understand that and also the executives understanding that, that everyone has a different respect for it. Totally, 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 totally. Listen, man, find yourself clients who love saying thank you. Yes. You won't have to worry about it. That's, I got you. That's the greatest gift ever. If some of you didn't know, the way that I started my company, again, I was, I saw the guy, I said thank you to him. He said, I did all that for you, he just lit up. So every time I clean a space, and every time I do something, I'm waiting for the client to say, hey, Gary, thank you. Thank you, it's beautiful words, go for it. Um, to the point of like, building up the team, and kind of getting them to feel that, um, they have a like, professional, Understanding their goals and where they want to go too. Because if they want to get to, like, oh, in my house, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that, and I think if you just to let them know that, okay, well, you're a professional and here's the path we're going to get you on, because a lot of people, like, I'm starting to realize people are miserable. And, like, if they feel that they're clean and they, they feel miserable, they're going to do a bad job. And, you know, we're here, we have the ability to see things differently. So, we gotta help them kind of see things different. Like we were talking about yesterday, mm -hmm. a lot of people are 
out here and just miserable. And they, they won't see the other side. Like, they're like, I'm not looking at So if you get your clean of goals and they say, well, I truly want to do this. And they say, okay, well, start to slowly shift them on their path. And so when they mess up, it's okay with your goals to get a house. Do you think you're going to get a house if you consistently keep missing this one spot? Mm -hmm. No, I'm not going to get that. So now the accountability is on them yeah. and where they want to go. They want to stay miserable. Totally, totally, man. I mean, that's that's a really good point coming from a guy who's running the game. During the interview process with my team or with any new employee that's coming on board, when they're interviewing, I would have a piece of paper and I would ask them a question. I would sit across from the desk. If I'm doing an interview, I'd ask them, "Hey, so why do you want to work here?" No, first I ask them, "Why do you want a job?" They're like, "It's obvious. I want to make money." And the money's gonna help you do what? Pay for pay for my, my bills? Okay, write that down. So the money's gonna help you pay for which bills? Well, I want to get a car, I want to take my kids to school, what happened? Okay, write that down. You write it down. And I ask them more and more questions about how long you want to stay with us? I want to stay with you forever. Stop it. No, you don't. How long do you want to stay with us? You get them 50, you know, what, what, seven months? Okay, okay, because at the eighth month, you're going to do what? Well, I want to do X. Okay, write it down. From that standpoint, I'm learning exactly how they're thinking. If I didn't ask, I would think they would stay with us for a year, year plus, and then all of a sudden they're leaving at seven months down for straight. But we get out right in, in the very beginning. Okay, as we go through the whole process, I tell them, now look at what you have in front of you. They literally have like, a step by step plan to see what they need to do to get to where they need to go. And the last question I ask them is, how can we help? Give me a job? I know, right. So if we give you a job and we commit to paying you every two weeks, what's your commitment to us? I will do X, Y, Z. Okay, that's what you said. I'm going to do my part. You will do yours. If you agree to that, let's take the next step. Now granted, those same individuals might be the same one that, you know, walk away from you after two days, but still, you at least took them through a process, they walk away with some gift given to themselves, You've made an impact in your life, right? So it's not always just about cleaning and getting people in the doors. It's about how do you impact people who come in and out of your life also because you are leaders. So it's not, this world is not just about you. It's not about me. It's about our impact to the world. So if you take on the responsibility of being a leader, act like it every single day. If you don't have any more questions, I want to make sure I keep you guys on time. I'm good. Any other thoughts before we go? Very popular, man. All right, you guys. <laughs>